Is Biden's Disinformation Governance Board unconstitutional? Mr. Reagan. The thought police would get him all the same. He had committed, would still have committed, even if he had never set pen to paper, the essential crime that contained all others in itself. Thought crime, they called it. Thought crime was not a thing that could be concealed forever. You might dodge successfully for a while, even for years, but sooner or later, they were bound to get you. That is an excerpt from George Orwell's dystopian novel, 1984. For those of you who have been hearing this term dystopian thrown around lately, but you don't know what it means, it's the opposite of utopia. A utopia is an idyllic future, peaceful and happy and perfect. A dystopia, on the other hand, is basically every zombie apocalypse movie. It's Mad Max. It's the future of the Terminator films or The Matrix. This is the future in the novel 1984, but instead of a barren wasteland with zombies or killer robots, this future seems very beautiful and very nice. But that is just a facade. The whole thing is rotten to the core. 1984 presents a future in which the federal government creates the illusion that it loves you and functions to protect you and keep you happy and safe. But in reality, it's merely controlling you, keeping the public blind to the truth, manipulating the populace with lies and often various other kinds of manipulation. George Orwell makes this manipulation almost comically obvious by revealing the three slogans of the party in power. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Sort of reminds me of the Democrats' use of terms like inclusion, which essentially means the exclusion of white men. Social justice, for which radical left DAs have simply neglected to prosecute criminals. Progressive, a term used to describe leftists, leftists who have actually reversed most of the actual progress Donald Trump made improving the economy, border security, the military, and the quality of life of most Americans, black, white, male, female, gay, or straight. You see, the authoritarian government in the dystopian novel 1984, they twist words to mean the opposite of their true definition. In the novel, George Orwell calls this doublespeak, and this is precisely what is done today in real life by Democrats. But what's truly bizarre is that within the book 1984, there is a government department called the Ministry of Truth. Now, as you may have guessed, since I told you that their government distorts words to manipulate the populace, the name the Ministry of Truth indicates that this agency is actually the Department of Propaganda. That is, the goal of this particular department is to deceive and manipulate the citizenry. And the reason I mention it, the reason I think that the inclusion of this department within this novel is so bizarre is that the Biden administration just established this very department. Within the government of the USSR, there was a propaganda department called the General Directorate for the Protection of State Secrets in the Press. The title of this department attempted to create the illusion that the purpose of this department was merely to protect government secrets for the protection of the nation against foreign adversaries. Of course, this was a lie. The purpose was to censor any speech the Bolshevik party did not like. This censorship was directed and enforced by the KGB. Well, apparently the Biden administration has been reading up on Russian history because it really looks like they've copied this model exactly. Although I'd like to offer one critical observation, instead of trying to create a benign sounding department name such as, such as the Soviets did, the Biden administration has decided upon the Disinformation Governance Board. <laughs> and, you know, okay, I, I get how they might think that this sounds benign, like we just want to make sure that, you know, disinformation, information that is incorrect is governed, it's tamped down, it's muted, it's suppressed, you know, so that good information, the truth, can be more efficiently and effectively communicated. Except, Every conservative in America knows exactly what they mean when they say disinformation. The word disinformation, as stated by a Democrat, by a Democrat politician, or by a left-wing journalist, it simply means a conservative idea. And given the reaction to Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter and his stated intention to allow free speech on the platform, it's clear that their use of the word governance is a thinly veiled reference to censorship. And just as the Russians pretended that they were only trying to stop foreign disinformation. No, 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 they would never, they would never go after their own citizens. In precisely the same way, this 
Biden administration disinformation governance board has stated that they're only going after foreign disinformation. Yeah, of course they are. Sort of like the foreign disinformation that was Hunter Biden's laptop. Maybe like the Russian disinformation that was basically anything anybody ever said in support of Donald Trump during the 2016 election. Yeah, foreign disinformation. Give me a break. We all know that this so-called disinformation governance board is really Democrat doublespeak for the conservative speech censorship board. That's all this is. It's an official government department dedicated to the censorship of conservative ideas. It's an official government department, the purpose of which is to silence political opposition. And I mean, it's kind of crazy that they'd call it that, given that obviously conservatives are going to associate it with the Ministry of Truth in 1984. But maybe that's what they want. Maybe the absurdly dystopian sounding name for this thing is actually a distraction. You see, what they're doing here is incredibly sinister. And when the government does things that are incredibly sinister, people will usually complain about it. But if they're trying to keep us distracted from what they're doing by directing us toward what they're calling it, well, then we might not notice just how incredibly sinister what they're doing actually is. And what exactly are they doing? Well, nobody knows yet, but I've thought about it and I think I figured it out. I'll explain in one moment. First, I have to sell you something. For years now, people have been setting up a little contest between crypto and gold, but that's like comparing trucks with SUVs. Both carry stuff and both travel from A to B, but they do different jobs. Gold's job is to keep the value of your money safe and to preserve its value. And since Ukraine and the oil and inflation crises, gold has done a brilliant job compared to stocks and other investments. So if you're worried about what's going on right now and who isn't, just talk to the experts at Noble Gold about precious metals IRAs for your retirement. They'll put you straight on your options and they'll hold your hand through the entire setup process. And this month, for any qualified IRA, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a Thank you. You know, when they sent me this, they, they send me coins every once in a while. Valeria flipped out. So far, this is her favorite coin. And I, and I have to say, I agree. This thing is pretty nice. So call 877-646-5347 right now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Right. So the Biden administration has created an executive department that is so sinister that you would only ever read about it in a dystopian fiction. And if I'm right, if they chose that name as a distraction, then I think they're really planning to do something quite drastic. There's really only one thing that I can think of, and it's pretty dang scary, guys. Now think about it. They've already been effectively censoring conservative speech for years now through social media, but they've been doing this in secret. So why make something that's been so effective in secret, why make that effort public? I mean, you're gonna make it public just because Elon Musk bought Twitter? Seems a little sus. Well, consider this. They have every major conduit of information in America pumping their ideas out to the public. They've capped off everything. Not a single Republican idea can squeeze through. The few small alternative news sources like Breitbart, Gateway Pundit, Zero Hedge, Newsmax, and Blaze Media, well, they're all basically ignored by Democrat voters. And Democrat voters all seem to think that Fox News is racist and spreads dangerous conspiracy theories and disinformation. And so the left hasn't really had to worry about most voters hearing any conservative ideas for a while now. They control just about every idea Americans have access to. And with that, they can win elections. Except now there's a leak in one of the hoses. Twitter, being owned by Elon Musk, could provide a platform from which Democrat voters might be exposed to conservative ideas. This is a problem. So how does a corrupt leftist regime plug that hole? Regulation. Conservatives have been saying for years now that social media companies need to be regulated in order to force them to allow conservatives to speak freely. And every time a conservative proposes this, leftists laugh at us. These are private companies, they say. They can do whatever they want. But now that one of these companies, Twitter, is owned by somebody who believes in free speech, well now Twitter will no longer censor conservatives. And so this private company is no longer doing what the left wants it to. And so now the left, in a panic, has realized that it does need to regulate these social media companies, not to force them to allow free speech, of course, but rather the opposite. 
I believe that the Disinformation Governance Board was created very specifically to regulate Twitter, to require the company to continue to censor conservative speech on the platform in the same way that it has been doing for years now. This is an extremely dangerous idea. It very clearly contradicts the values of the nation, the principles of our culture, and the basic human rights of American citizens. And yet, the left does not care about any of that. The gravity of this situation is easy to underestimate, however, and I don't know if this was planned by the puppeteers working behind the scenes of the Biden administration or if it was just a happy accident, but they hired an absolute buffoon to head up this operation. But you know, I don't think that the fact that they gave this thing this Orwellian title and they also hired a TikTok performing clown to head it up, I don't think that these two things are just a coincidence. I am pretty sure that this is a form of misdirection. Look over here at these silly things so that you don't realize that we're stripping away your First Amendment rights. Now, this woman, the new head of the Disinformation Governance Board, her name is Nina Jankowitz. She is a wannabe musical theater actress. No joke. Check this out. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. When Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain, they're laundering disinfo, and we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. Oh! Now you've probably seen that video. Everybody's posting it on Twitter and and spent on Fox News and stuff like that. But when I saw this, my first thought was, I know people like this. I've worked in Hollywood long enough to have met a ton of people just like her. They're people desperate for attention. They need to be the center of attention all the time. They are addicted to the spotlight. And that's exactly what this woman is. I said as much on Sebastian Gorka's show the other day. But what's funny is that I had not yet seen another video that's been floating around about this chick, a video that Gorka then played for me. Barbara Streisand has it all and I can do what she can do. So why is she rich, famous, and powerful? While I am still stuck here singing Christmas songs for all of you. That video there says it all. I mean, I know she's trying to be funny, but I don't think this is the kind of comedy that's, it's so not true that it's funny. I think it's the kind of comedy that it's funny because it's so true. And look, this chick is totally unqualified and basically a total joke. And the administration keeps insisting that she's, you know, super impressive and totally qualified. And I mean, it's just like obvious that this is not true. It's strange to me how the Biden administration keeps hiring these infantile weirdos. I mean, I know that we're all pretty convinced that the Democrats are just trying to destroy the country at this point, but even if you want to destroy the country, wouldn't you bring on competent people to help you destroy it? Why bring in dingbats like this? And so that's why my guess is that she she's an intentional distraction. And in fact, it may be that a lot of these unqualified fruitcake Biden appointees are, are just being hired as distractions, maybe. You know, while we're all laughing about how annoying and unqualified Nina Jankowitz is, we're ignoring the fact that the Biden administration is openly violating the First Amendment. Apparently, this Nina Jankowitz wrote a book expressing her belief that conservatives need to be censored. And so she is definitely the quintessential useful idiot. And if I'm right about her being an annoying distraction, She's a perfect useful idiot because there are few people less annoying than an infantile self-absorbed narcissist trying to be a musical theater actor. But we do need to take this disinformation governance board very seriously. Even the fact that they think they can get away with establishing such a board is concerning because, and this is extremely important, it's unconstitutional. And I know I mentioned it a couple of times already, but apparently the Biden administration is not aware of this. There is something in America called the First Amendment. And for a long time, leftists hid behind a loophole in that basic human right enshrined in the Constitution, the loophole that this law only applies to the government, the loophole that facilitates the suppression of political ideas just so long as it's done by a private company, Facebook, Twitter, 
YouTube. Of course, this loophole disappears if the government is in any way influencing a company regarding speech censorship, something Jen Psaki has admitted to. In terms of actions, Alex, that uh, we have taken or we're working to take, I should say, from the federal government, we're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. And yet, inconceivably, Still, nothing has been done about the administration's obvious violation of the First Amendment here. And I guess that has emboldened the Biden administration because now they've done something that is so outrageously illegal that as far as I'm concerned, this is an impeachable offense. No government entity can set up a board to decide which speech is permissible by American citizens. I know that they're pretending that it's foreigners, but we all know that's not true. And it's not clear to me at this point what the punishment for wrong think is going to be in this brave new Democrat dystopia, but that really doesn't matter to me. Just the establishment of this government body is a violation of our rights as Americans. It's funny, you know, in 2020, as we were approaching the election, I didn't think the Democrats would ever dare try to steal an election. I just didn't think that that was something that they'd be crazy enough to do. I mean, sure. Politicians have broken lots of laws in the past, been corrupt in various kinds of ways, but to violate the sanctity of the election process and for such an important position as the presidency, it seemed unfathomable. And I was pretty depressed that November. But there's a better word, in fact. There's a perfect word to describe what I felt after that election. Disillusioned. Of course, the 2020 election was perfect. We're not allowed to say otherwise here on YouTube, so I guess it's completely illogical for me to have been disillusioned after that election. I should have felt pure satisfaction with such a secure and corruption-free process. And yet for some reason, for some odd reason, I was disillusioned. And you might think that after being so disillusioned that I could no longer be surprised by the depths Democrats could sink to. That there was no level of creative evil Democrats could shock me with. No amount of disrespect to our constitutional republic with which Democrats could catch me off guard. And yet here I am, caught off guard, surprised, shocked. To create a government department, the sole purpose of which is to openly and obviously violate the First Amendment to the Constitution, and to do it brazenly and with obvious intention, the depravity is truly astonishing. I suppose after they so viciously and unlawfully targeted January 6 protesters, nothing should surprise me. I guess that's what I get for being an optimist. There's a funny story in my naivete here. I had actually written a script almost exactly two months ago. This was a comedy script for my Mr. Pagan channel. It was called The Department of Illicit Cognition and Knowledge, or DICK for short. This was a satirical script about a government organization established by the Biden administration to censor so-called disinformation. The reason I felt confident writing this script was that it seemed inconceivable that it could ever actually happen. This is the stuff of fiction. And yet, here we are. I guess this is how the Babylon Bee feels all the time. So anyway, since the Biden administration actually established my satirical department under a slightly different name, well, the script now needs to be completely rewritten. Anyway, because Biden's Disinformation Governance Board and my Department of Illicit Cognition and Knowledge are essentially the same thing, I guess that makes Nina Jankowitz the head of this department, the head of the dick. And uh, just so that I don't end this episode on a sophomoric joke, allow me to communicate one last observation. Whether or not the administration's title of Disinformation Governance Board was a serious effort at an appropriate title or another distraction like their goofy musical theater actress appointee, the title Disinformation Governance Board is, ironically, rather appropriate. Because though the name is intended to be interpreted as a board that stops disinformation, it could also be interpreted as a board that is the source of disinformation. Well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they're dystopian level fiction crazy. Good night. Woo! All right, done. You know, someone very profoundly once said that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism. And what is fascism? Fascism is private ownership, but total government control and regulation. Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative, so-called, is the one that says less government. Get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny.